All right, guys, I am really excited about this one. Taking me a minute to get here to this point. Had to learn a whole new program to do it, and I'm still learning. I'll have my thoughts on Luna here at the very end, but guess what we're doing today? We are making a song from left to right, side to side, top to bottom. We are making a song with Luna with the Apollo solo. Let's go. All right, first, thanks so much for joining me on the channel. My name is Steve. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments how you like to make your songs. Uh, what's your workflow like? Do you have any questions? Let me know, happy to answer, happy to help you guys out. What is this video gonna be about? So it's a long form video. I've shot this over the course of a couple days and we're building a song. That's what we're doing here. Um, and we're doing it strictly with the Apollo Solo and the Console Classic Sessions Pack that I've just released. All of the sounds, all of the settings that I build the song with are all available in there. And it'll help you guys get started and build your songs from start to finish too. So check it out and it's available now. Where, where did this video come from? Okay, so um, I wanted to build a song entirely on Luna for a long time and the Apollo solo. I thought it'd be really cool, <laughs> honestly. As I started building some of these presets, uh, some of the sounds were a little inspiring to me and I just kind of really was digging this one little jam. And so I thought it'd be really cool, build the sessions pack, but make a song with the very same sessions pack that you guys would be picking up. So. That's what you'll see in this video, and I'm gonna take you through the entire process of what I do, how I you know, formulate my song, how I go through the entire production process. We'll have it in chapters, and you just can skip ahead to whatever part that you are curious on if you're having trouble at home. Um, or if not, just make sure you stick around. The video is gonna be awesome. So first things first, let's just talk about the overview and the basics of what I like to do before I get going. Um, typically, First off, I, I don't just start recording, right? I don't usually typically do that. Typically, I'll have a song or a song structure that I've kind of played around with on my guitar for a little bit, and, and then usually a songwriter or you know myself, I'll already have lyrics to the song, and it's ready to get to that next phase, which is where you'd either do pre-production and build the demo out, or you'd actually just start doing the track. Now, for me or for Kat, I just like to go straight to the song. I don't really worry too much about demos because if I'm doing a demo, I'm gonna focus so much energy to make sure that it sounds good in the first place. Why not just put the extra effort in and make it release ready? So what I do first is I'll usually open up a new session, blank session file, and then um, the first things first that I like to do is find the tempo and then lay down some sort of a guide track to send off to my drummer, my session drummer. And then from there, I'll double back around and I'll make sure that I finish that rhythm section, make sure that it's, you know, it's, it feels really good, the groove's right. Then from there, I'll start to add the layers, I'll start to add the electric guitars, any synths, uh, and then the vocals last. And as I go, I kind of mix and I get, I get the feel that I want. Um, and I like to mix top down, so I, I usually try to find like the most important part in the most important section and make sure that that feels right and then kind of work backwards from there. Similar to Michael Brower, if you guys don't know Michael Brower, you need to check his stuff out. It's incredible. He's unbelievable and I've learned so much from all the resources and videos that he's done. So make sure you check him out. But yeah, let's get to it. Let's let's move on to the first step here. Let's check out uh, let's check out what I do uh, with the drums and see where my session starts at. Uh, enjoy. All right. See you in the next chapter. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and start a blank new session file and um, start building the project up. Now, uh, we'll fast forward at some point in this process because I've already done some of it, but I do wanna walk through the initial steps and kind of show you what that looks like. As I'm sure most of you are familiar, but if you're not, just hang with me for a moment. So the first thing that I like to do, uh, normally my workflow is logic, right? I haven't totally made that switch to Luna just yet. Um, so we're gonna start out there and I wanna explain why real quick. So if you've seen my previous video on Easy Drummer, um, which you can check out right here, I love to use Easy Drummer. It's easy to audition different sounds and find the right one for the song that I'm building. And also it helps me work with my session drummer. And whenever I get my files back, if I don't like a fill, I can just swap a fill out, make a new fill. Super easy for my workflow. But with Luna, Luna doesn't support software multi uh, channel output. So 
Um, because of that, what I'm going to do, it's just easier for me to do it this way, I'm used to it right now, is I'll go into, Lo uh, into logic and then I'll build my, my MIDI file around and then I'll export individually each channel that I need to bring into Luna. And we'll walk through that real quick, we'll check it out. But first, we need to build a new project from scratch. So let's go ahead, we're gonna create a new empty project and I'm gonna show you what I like to do. Um, so first, we're gonna open up an Easy Drummer. And uh, like I said, I like to do multi-output. This helps me out. I could do stereo in this instance since I'm bouncing everything out one by one. But I'm going to go ahead and just start with, um, uh, let's just do it that way. It'll probably be easier uh, to show you in this instance. So once I get that created here, the very next thing that I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to make sure that I sent my tempo right. And I already know what that is. It's 84 BPM. And... Now that I've got that, what I would typically do is I would add a track. We'll add one audio track in this instance, and then I would lay down my guide track. And actually, let's, why don't we lay down a guide track real quick? All right, so usually I'll do it. I, I, it doesn't matter to me how I do it. I don't know if I like to do it more. I typically will do it with just like an acoustic guitar. So you can take the time, make a nice guide track, or you can just DI it. Really, this is going to be done all over again. So that'd be pretty much about it. Now let's uh, let's check this out. Let's open up some. Let's open up console. We're going to start a new session here. Let's just load this DI sound sample. Cool. So what I'll typically do is I'll usually start tracking a handful of bars out. That gives me enough space in like pre-roll to not have to worry um, about just starting right on that one. All right, cool. Now that I've laid down the guide track, right, the next step of what I would do is I would build the um, markers, right? I'd build in some markers to kind of give an idea of what part is what. And then the song should be ready to send off to my drummer. So got our intro section. Now we're right into this verse. And then add your chorus bit. There you go. Really easy, real simple, easy to do. And that just, that helps. So some people like to color code it as well. That's that. So now that we've got our guide track down, you kind of see how I set up my initial side of the project. Let's fast forward to where we actually look at the drums and how we export them into Luna so we can get started on the song. So now that we've got our, our project back, uh, we've got this whole song set up with drums here. And before we can jump into Luna and actually get started making the song in Luna, uh, what I need to do first is get each individual instrument in the drum set uh, on its own. Now, a, a quick tip if you're doing this, if you're gonna be exporting you know, each individual element, you're gonna wanna make sure that you bounce it to WAV file, 24-bit. You could go 44.1, 48K, 96K. That part is, it, uh, is up to you, but you definitely want to go wave and you definitely want to go 24 bit at least. And then you also want to make sure that if you're exporting from Easy Drummer that you're soloing in the program, uh, which you'll see here, you'll solo each element as it goes. So in this case, we have kick, snare, hi-hat, toms, overhead, an ambient room channel, a comp, uh, side chain comp channel, and we have some tambourine and percussion ambient. So, what we do is we first start with a kick. We're gonna file bounce project or selection. Hit OK. And then we're gonna to wanna to save this just for simplicity's sake. We're gonna to wanna to save this to a desktop inside of a new folder. And we're gonna name this file. We're gonna to wanna to name this file kick. 
simple as that, right? And you just name, you go corresponding, pretty straightforward. So a couple pro tips, you're going to want to make sure that this is exported at 24 bit. Uh, you can go 44.1, you can go 96 K that's, you know, that's dependent on you. Um, in this case, we're going 24 bit 44 one. It's all good. <laughs> and you're also going to want to make sure that your logic channel is at zero at unity gain and your stereo outs at, at unity gain so that when you export each element, when you drop it back into Luna, you don't have to remix it or change in your levels. They're all just consistent as to what you heard them um, when you were finished with building that mix. Not to say that you couldn't make changes later, but at least this way, this is the starting point that you were leaving off with when you were done with the software. And another tip, a final tip on this step is that start the export process from an even starting point in the process. So when you bounce it in, you can just drag it right to the beginning of your project and it lines up on the grid. Super easy to do. So let's go ahead and do that. Now this section might take a minute. We'll see you on the other side. Now that we're done exporting our drums, we're gonna wanna jump into Luna now, build that session file up and start setting up uh, the markers. And then we can go from there, we can start building out our song. So let's go, let's check that out. All right, cool. So from here, we're going to just do the same thing. We're going to put 84 uh, beats per minute and we're going to rename this. Let's call it the uh, new session. Create. So from here, all we have to do is just with the corresponding export, we're going to create a new track. Now this is, this is something that I had to learn the hard way. You have to make sure that your signal matches what your export is. So for example, your kick drum signal is a mono signal. So make sure that when you're in Luna, that when you add a new track, you add audio, audio mono, and we're going to name it kick hit. Okay. And we can just keep going down. We can add another one. We can add snare. Okay, and then whenever we go to import, we can just drag and drop it onto the grid wherever we want. We go all the way to start if we want to, but I like to start later, have a little bit of extra pre-roll there. And then we just keep importing there, right? And just drag it along. Now let's fast forward to the end so you guys don't have to wait and let's, let's see the end of this project and what it looks like. All right, cool. So I've got all of the tracks set up here and I've got my markers set up. And we're ready to move on to the next step, which is track an acoustic guitar. Let's check it out. Awesome. So we've got our drums taken care of. We've got the session file built. Uh, I've already got an idea of what I want to play for the acoustic guitar. And I've already made my choices creatively to get this kind of acoustic guitar set up. I think we're ready. Uh, let's lay down some acoustic guitar. So before we get started, uh, I just wanted to point out that this acoustic guitar tone that is actually available with the console classics. Uh, I made this preset specifically so that you guys can build your tracks quicker and easier and no hassle and I wanted to show what that sounded like so I decided to build this song. You can pick up that pack now, it's available. Um, so yeah, check it out and uh, let's track some guitar. All right, well, acoustic guitar work's been done. Now on to the next part, the thunder and bass. Let's go. All right, so I'm back in my home studio here, and I'm gonna be tracking bass today in Luna with the Apollo solo. Let's go. All right, so um, for the bass line, I might have to actually figure out what I wanna play here. This song is I really want the rhythm section to be pretty tight. I, I like moving bass lines and bass lines that add to the song, but I'm a little nervous that in this particular song that it's just going to have to be, if I do too much, it's going to be overwhelming. So um, let's take a look and actually listen to the track. Let's get it pulled up. All right, here's the intro.
Cool, awesome. So we've got a verse section, we got the opening, we got a pre-course and a chorus section. And I, I just, that's the goal. We want this thing to sit right somewhere in there and not be too far out front because we know that some of the articulations on the acoustic guitar, they're a little bit more out front and we still got to add the electric guitar and vocals. So this bass has got to sit just right for this thing to really shine. Now, one thing before I get started, we got to create our track um, and we got to make sure that we tune our bass. And I, this, this somehow didn't make it into the, uh, the video on Luna that I did that you can see right here. But I found another thing that I don't like about Luna and I've already talked to UA about it and they don't have a tuner. The hell. <laughs> so we're going to jump into Logic and make sure our bass is in tune. We'll just do an empty new project. So this song is played in half step down. Always check for intonation. Looks like this is just a little bit out, so we're gonna go ahead and intonate. That one could be a little better. Sounding good there. So this bass, this bass hangs up on a wall most of the time, which I don't recommend doing because it throws out your intonation every time that you do. <laughs> so now we got to set up our uh, console session. Let's jump over back into Luna and get this bass set up. All right, so we just jumped back into Luna here. We've got to set up a channel to track on and we also have to get our sounds. Now I could build the sounds within Luna, but I'm gonna jump over into console and use my console classics bass preset and show you guys what that sounds like as well. And we're just gonna print it all right within the session file and we'll work with that. We're gonna do it that way. So let's, let's get that going and show you what that looks like. So here I'm gonna add an audio instrument. I'm gonna name this bass, all right? It's mono, cool. And let's change this color to a darker color. Now I like to, for my sessions, I like to have my bass right next to the drums. So I'm just gonna move it up there. And uh, yeah, that looks good. So now we've got our input selected here. You can see that it's on this mic line one high Z. And, but we, get, we don't have any unison tracks. We don't have any record effects of tracks. And we want that. So let's jump into console. So you can see now in console, normally you only have four record uh, insert slots, but once you open up Luna and you open up console, it starts to mirror what is in Luna. So let's go ahead and load up the console classic session. Now I'm gonna be just doing like a finger picked sound. I want that like nice and warm kind of round thing going on just so it kind of sits nicely in the background and has a good punch to it. So let's, let's load up this uh, bass finger preset. And now, now you can see I've got this preset on. Let's see what it sounds like. All right, cool, that's all right. But it's hitting a little hot here, so let's go ahead and just adjust the output on this last part of the signal chain, just down a little bit. Cool, that's hitting, that's hitting right where I want it. I can always pull it down in, on the fader there, so I think that's pretty good. And I like the sound of that one. I think it's ready to go, so let's jump back into Luna. And now, We've got our channel, but it, it's not mirrored just yet. So what do we need to do to do that? We need to enable, we need to enable the track for input monitoring. And now you can see that Luna has now corresponded what's in console into the effects tracks. Um, and so also it's important to note that it is in the record effects. You can see it says record effects right there in the channel strip. So, um, we're ready, we're ready to uh, get some sounds. Now, again, I'm not totally set on what I'm playing for this song, so mm -hmm. before I record, I'm just gonna play through the song and kind of jam along and figure out what, you know, what works for me. See what we come up with.
pretty good. Um, I'm just going to play around, jam a little bit more, and try to find a, a something that's more consistent and feels just right. So, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start tracking in just a second here. All right, after a little bit of a jam session there, I think I've got it. So let's, uh, let's get it. Let's do this. Awesome. So that was super fun. Uh, love the bass. It's always fun. Not the best bass player, but hey, that's cool. Uh, I think we got a good part. So um, let's uh, let's jump on over to the electric guitars, and then we'll show the next bit, which is going to be like writing the song. All right, let's go. I am down to my favorite part: electric guitars. Now, I love to do electric guitars because it's what I grew up on. I, I've been playing guitar my whole life and it's really what got me started in music. Um, I don't know, I don't know what, what else more to say on this part, but I will say how I approach this song is going to be largely from a layer standpoint. I love to use electric guitars to add layers, add like crazy sounds and ambient delays and swells and stuff like that. So we're going to have some fun making this one and, uh, We'll see what we come out with on the other side. And once we're done with this, we're going to move on to actually writing the song. Now, this is a little backwards. I know a lot of people like to write a song with the words first while they make this structure. But for this special project, I thought we would do something a little different. And I'm going to bring in a, a songwriter. She happens to be the love of my life. And uh, it's going to be awesome. So uh, let's get to this. All right, so we're gonna jump back into console. So I've already got my guitar here, and the only thing is, just like the bass, I'm gonna have to run this through a tuner, so let's jump over back into Logic. I can't believe they didn't include a tuner plugin. I mean, I know they make one, and it's funny because Universal Audio said to me directly in a chat, they were like, yeah, buy our, uh, buy our amp sim, which, I think they'll probably include it later on for free, but I think they're just so busy fixing other little things right now that, hey, it's all good. I totally understand where they're coming from. So uh, for now, this is my solution. Let's get this bad boy. Let's get this bad boy going. Now, another thing is that I am making this song specifically with the console classics, uh, console classics pack that I have. And I hope that you like the sounds if you do. These are the kind of sounds that you can get from it. It's super creative and it's gonna be awesome. I made them, I made the electric guitar presets specifically for single coils, uh, like a Strat or like a Tele. Um, and then I made one for a humbucking style guitar. Uh, so the presets are adjusted for those input signals. So definitely check those out. They're available now. And um, yeah, let's get this guitar tuned up and start making some sounds. So I, what I like to do is tune below the note and let the guitar adjust for a second, and then I tune all over again. Now, something that's really cool about this guitar is this is a 1995 American Standard 
uh, Fender Telecaster. And the thing that's really cool about this one is that it's got a four-way pickup mod. And I have a 1988 Fender Telecaster that is just standard and the sounds are completely different. It's so cool. This one sounds really mean, kind of nasty. The other one's really clean and pretty. All right, let's load up, um, let's load up some sounds here. Let's get that going and see what we think. I always mention I like to audition sounds. So let's audition some. E guitar SC. Let's listen to this. Uh, let's just go dirty. Yeah, cool. We've got a little bit of a room sound going on there. Yeah, cool. I like that. I think it's cool. And that's just literally loaded straight up. And that's what you guys can expect from that console classic sessions. Um, so definitely check it out. Now, let's bring this into uh, the track. Add audio. Let's just call this. Now, I don't know why, but I love to work from left to right. So I'm going to make this guitar E, guitar L for left. Let's just jam along and see what happens. So let's stop it right there. I know in this verse section, I'm gonna to wanna to have like some swells and some ambience. Um, so that's something that I'm probably gonna circle back to later. And I think in the opening, I'm not really sure if I wanna just do the. I don't know that I wanna do that. I might wanna do more like. Just something kind of more Americana sounding. So let's try that again. That's from the top. So I didn't really like the tone of where it was at. I think I like that better. It's kind of more clean, but still broken up. And it's got a cool kind of chiminess that I like. Let's try that. That's all right. Uh, let's pan this a little bit and just see what that sounds like when we play it back. Yeah, cool. That's a pretty cool, um, pretty cool there. I'm going to keep jamming around with that rhythm section. And um, once I kind of nail it down, the next scene, let's fast forward a minute from now and you'll see the real track as I track it.
I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. This is just one guitar, so I've got plenty more to go. Also, totally want to change this color. All right, let's do a check here real quick. Let's see what that sounds like. I don't know, that might be too hot of a signal. Let's just, let's tear, let's take that down just a hair. And to do that, you're gonna to wanna to pull this output gain of this one, the last signal down just a little bit. For those of you who watched my other video on Luna, you know that uh, when I delete something, it doesn't really get deleted yet. So I'm trying to keep these performances <laughs> to just a take or two uh, so I don't balloon my hard drive space up. But um, who cares about that? Let's track another one. <laughs> that's it's one guitar down um, some of that stuff I might fade in I might fade out and I think I'm I may do one more pass of that just to have it um, so yeah all right I'll see you in the next bit with the next guitar and the next sound so I wrapped up that last take we're gonna add a, another track here and this one is let's just call it um, guitar R for now. Let's jump back into the console classic stuff and let's find, let's just load up this clean preset and see what this sounds like. <laughs> an aux channel. Now, I've talked about this before, about printing this aux channel on the way in. So how we would do that is we would go back into, let's add this stereo, guitar, FX, print, add. And now on this one, we're gonna choose those aux one and go back to console. Mm -hmm push that back up and this is going to be okay so it's still not showing up in Luna don't know why but at least I can hear it 
So I had this idea for a layer. So right in this uh, second verse, I want to do something like... Uh, So let's do that. Let's just see. delay let's sink it See what that sounds like now. Yeah. All right, that's kind of cool. I'm going to have to keep tweaking on this. I think it might be We're on the right track. I'll have to play around with that sound a little bit more and uh, I'll probably jump over to another guitar and try out a Les Paul and see what that sounds like. So we're gonna move on to some lead guitar now. Uh, just restrung this bad boy, got her tuned up. This guitar has been my trusty guitar since I really started playing. Um, it's seen almost every gig I've ever played, uh, almost every song I've ever wrote and performed on. This thing's awesome and I can always trust it to get a cool sound and it's fun to play. So um, bef real quick, before we jump into that, I do want to show you this. Again, I'm using my Console Classic Sessions Pack, which you can get now. Uh, there's a link in the description. Let's jump over into Console Classics. We'll load up the humbucker sound. Yeah, so it's, it's totally different there. It kind of hits the guitar a little different. And uh, it's kind of cool, you know? Super cool, classic kind of sound, real smooth. But I don't know that that's what I want to go with for this song. So let's load up a different one. Let's load up a lead sound.
right, so I finally wrapped up tracking guitars. I've got all the layers that I want, and I just really quickly wanted to take you through the session. So let me do that real quick and show you how I've got some of this stuff set up. So I have got all my drum tracks right here. These are all my drum tracks. Got my bass track, got the acoustic guitar tracks done. Uh, like I said before, I did that stereo miking right there. And now what I've done is I've got my left and right rhythm guitars. I've got my lead guitar and then I've got just some special stuff right there uh, in the verse. And I'll play that section for you in a minute. But these dim looking uh, wave files, those are effects routing prints. And earlier I said that I was going to show you how I did that. That process um, in Luna right now is a little bit different than what you would do in something like Logic. So what I did is, and first also the processing that I want to show you on here that Luna has is awesome. It comes with this uh, oxide tape uh, saturation. It's the whole point of Luna really. So I threw it on all the electric guitars. It sounded really good on there and it kind of just smoothens it out, gives it this analog sound. Um, almost like you're tracking the tape. So it sounds freaking killer. Um, but to show you what I do for the effects routing in console, if I were to pull this up and load one of my console classic presets, let's go. Everything in this first channel would get tracked into Luna, but this auxiliary channel over on this right side of the screen, that wouldn't get directly tracked in there. It's almost just for monitoring in that sense. So what you would do is you would track your guitar, for example, all the way through. Then what you would do is you would add a second track, uh, like an audio track, make sure that it's a stereo track and we're going to name this one example. And then what you'd want to do is in this input, what we need to do is loop the audio like a send effect. So what we would do is choose virtual one and two. And then in the track lead guitar one, the one that we want to print the effects to, we'd make sure that in the send, we're going to send this out in your output to virtual one and two. So all that really means is that you're coming out of virtual one and two into the new channel, if you can kind of visualize it that way. Um, and then all we need to do is just pull it up to unity gain. Unity gain is even zero. So like 100% output basically. Um, and now if I turn on this uh, monitoring. Mm. Eli, no. If I turn on this input monitoring here, I can solo this and you'll see as we move forward to this track. Now you can see that the track is coming through in the example and all I'd have to do is load up some sort of effect. And, that, and that's how you monitor it. Now, when you would go to print it, all you would do, and this is just like an old school workflow, you just turn on the record enable, and then you just, you just track it. Whoops, sorry, make sure that your track's enabled to record as well. And now you see in, in Luna there, now we've, now we've tracked it. So that's what I did. I did it in the background because um, it's kind of a boring process. So I didn't think we needed to film that, but I did want to show you that. So you know how to do it later. All right. Now that we've wrapped up with this uh, session of tracking electric guitars, we're going to move on to tracking vocals and uh, we're going to bring in the specialist for that one. So uh, 
Fast forward to the next part. All right, see ya.